All right, guys, we are here today at BAS Part Salvage. Part sales. Part sales for aircraft. And what does BAS stand for? Originally, it was Beagles Air Service. So, okay. so Beagles is our sister company. 13 years ago, we separated the companies, and so we just ran with the acronym. So BAS, BAS. for Beagles Air Service. Well, you guys know that I love airplanes. I love airplane parts, mechanicing, working on them and everything. I actually bought parts from these guys to help build the Red Rocket, and I bought the Red Rocket from a salvage yard in Phoenix, Arizona. So, I mean, this type of stuff is right up my alley. And since I was in town here in Greeley, Colorado, I've decided to stop in and make a video of all this. So, can you show us around? Absolutely. All right, so here we go. And I, I've already decided this place is kind of impressive because like outside it looks crazy cool, but Wow, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's uh, what's going on so right here right now. you are looking at the disassembly hangar. Okay. Um, this is where we bring in um, aircraft that we are going to uh, disassemble for parts. Um, we there's a lot of we have a lot of little euphemisms that we like around here that are that are different than the, the salvage industry in general. Like I like to say that we don't own a saw because we don't cut anything, right? Yeah. We surgically disassemble airplanes from whatever state we collect them in to whatever you know, group of parts we can we can remove. Well, that and, gives the parts the most value as correct. well. And, and we get the most from the airplane, mm -hmm. so so we have more available to go back into the fleet. Um, and then things that are damaged or beyond repair or go into a recycling bin, whether it's copper, or rubber, plastic, steel, aluminum. Um, so we really don't throw much in a landfill. Oh, so that's awesome. Um, this is generally how the process works. We bring in airplanes. Um, the mechanics uh, go sort of one at a time and, and disassemble from whatever state they come to us to something like this. Well, you'll see here this 182 is um, there's basically nothing left. Um, seats, carpet, plastics. Um, we'll generally get most of that wiring out before it goes out into the yard. Um, Oh, um, there's a bin of stuff, maybe for recycle. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> some of it is. Sometimes, sometimes it's, sometimes it's recycling. That's mostly avionics. So that's instruments and indicators. And this this frame doesn't look bad from what I see. I no. don't know. Is this this is a reusable? Some sometimes they come to us from you know hurricanes and tornadoes and, and crazy things. Sometimes they land in people's front yards really hard. Yeah. Sometimes uh, we had a plane a few weeks ago that a, pi a student pilot hit and he destroyed one wing, but the rest of the airplane was pretty well in, in perfect condition. <laughs> well, um, now I have questions about how you get planes, so let, we'll, let's yeah, get right? into that a little right, bit later. Right? But um, So well, you see kind of the finishing stages here. Um, yeah. You know, Piper almost done. And you see, you know, damage like this happens. Um, yeah, but that's just an easy panel. Right. But no, P the PA-28 platform, yeah, that's a 180. 180, yeah. Yeah, cool. It's kind of weird to see some of these things with the wings off and just, yeah, firewalls. It, it's a, we took a fuselage like this with us to Oshkosh last year, and it was amazing how much attention it got because you never see a fuselage like this. Yeah. You know, stripped down, firewall out, just just bare bones. It's a it's not common to see it. We see it every day, but it's not it's not common. Guys, I'm I'm literally eating this stuff up. I'm I'm loving it. Let's go look at that air tractor. <laughs> this one's in a little bit worse condition, right? This one was, Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. This one um this one had a pretty hard it had a rough day. You see the the crinkle, yeah, um, and the, the verticals bent. Like this one, this one had some had some problems. Um, this looks like it kind of got flipped a little bit. I'm not exactly sure how this one landed, but it, it didn't have a it had a rough day. Um, the beauty of this is like these things that are crinkled. You know, either it's going to get recycled or it's going to get uh, derivated and, and reused in some way, or it ends up as art on somebody's. somebody's I, I've got that on my wall door. at, at you know right? where I shoot. Yeah. Um, but then all of the other you know sort of individual implements from the airplane are parts that we can we can recycle back into the fleet. This thing over here is pretty cool. This is the tank for the... It's uh, the hopper. The hopper. Yeah, the hopper is pretty cool. I, I was looking at some of the newer air tractors. They can... You know, the useful load's like 5,000 pounds or something. It's a lot. This one's in pretty good shape. Um, <laughs> this is stuff you never get to see. Oh, my goodness. A couple of parts in there. And and notice, I mean, so turn your camera back in this way. Oh, notice okay. the big ball bearing in there. Yeah, you, know, you just... You don't see those little details no. of things very... Things that you... I mean, you, you see stuff in pictures, but you don't... This is this is really cool, actually. Yeah. And 
This is from this, this guy. Oh, whoa. Yeah, this is. <laughs> Golly. Yeah, this one's pretty well done. So we'll still, if you notice all the all the things here, we'll, we'll still go through this airplane and vacuum it out. It'll be clean when it goes out in the yard. All of this trash gets taken care of. All the nuts and bolts get put in a bag. But then the airplane turns into components like this. Say hi, AJ. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Just checking out my plane. I yeah. hope, it's a, hope it's good on video. Yeah. <laughs> No, this is this is all really cool stuff. Oh, there we go. You know, we have a video on our channel. Um, one of our club members accidentally ran the airplane into the hangar, and our propeller looks a little oh, like yeah. that afterwards. Right. <laughs> we see a lot of that. Um, but it really comes down to the smallest, you know, we say nuts and bolts to whole fuselages. It just we take everything reusable off the airplane, and it, it turns into you know segmentations like this. There's a, we have a whole cleaning room, I'll show you in a second, where we, we either scrub soap and water or bead blast or zinc coat or whatever is, is necessary for that part, yeah. that particular item, um, and then we, before we make it available for sale. So That's awesome. Well, cool. Let's, let's head that way. All right. So this, this is the cleaning room. So this is the cleaning room. So you, you see Sam over there in the tank. He's scrubbing something. Dylan's polishing up the surface. Um, everything that we take from an airplane, big or small, comes through this process somehow. I think Bryce is sandblasting something over here. We take all the parts through this process, right? They'll, these guys will touch every single item that comes off the airplane, and then we're going to go right out this door. This is too much fun. Excellent. I'm seeing uh, inspiring words all over the right. place. Right. Yeah. We, we definitely strive. So then it comes into research. So okay. these fellas, um, you see, um, this is Matt and Matt. Hi, Matt and Matt. Um, you can't work here unless your name's Matt. Apparently. Um, so you see Matt setting up the prop. What he's doing is picturing. So he's. Oh, I've seen this on eBay, Facebook, right. all over the place on right. social media. That is your background. So he is. Um, he what he's what Matt's done is he's taken the whole project that came out of the shop floor. It's gone through cleaning. It's turned into mini racks like this. Okay. He's gone through each part and made sure that it has all of the traceability. Make sure it has the right part numbers and, and, and makes and manufacturers or whatever is relevant to this thing. Mm -hmm. He's done that for every single item that came off of that airplane. Wow. Now he's picturing. So now he's, he's finished his research process. He's setting up the pictures. And then when he's done, he'll hand a whole pile of information to our listing team. And that's a, a group of ladies that turns that, that information into an e-commerce listing. That's how it becomes available on our website. Wow. I mean, just look at all these parts. Just so many. Notice everything's been cleaned. Everything yeah. Has been, everything you know, looks near brand new. Everything's been touched. We it's inspected. Oh my gosh! I didn't even look this direction. It's inspected many times over before it gets um, here, and it gets inspected in here again. So if it's broken, damaged, cracked, bent, um, it'll get recycled or sold as a core or something. So um, it's, we we offer a, a huge uh, guarantee. We have a 90 day money back guarantee because. We're very careful about how we take the plane apart. We're very careful about cleaning it. We're very careful about part numbering it and making sure the right information is available. Um, but it's been inspected numerous times before it ever becomes available to the public. That's awesome. So, All right, so I know that there's like shelves and shelves here and I'm, I'm kind of interested in seeing like miles of shelves of parts. Yeah. The researchers bring their inventory this way. Holy crap. And this place just goes on and on and on. And it's, it's hyper organized. We can ship your parts the same day because when you order something, we know that it's on this row and it's in this bin. And the, the shipper can come right through here, pull whatever it is from this bin, and we know exactly what's uh, what's here so that we can when you order from us we ship same day 97% of the time even if it's freight even if we have to build a crate and put it on a truck uh, we can typically get it out the door the same day this is insane so yeah it's um <laughs> it's wild wow so how much do you ship per day um, we tend to ship around a hundred packages a day on any given day um, there are some days like um, 
like uh, the Monday after Thanksgiving, which is just like all hands on deck in the shipping department because the website runs 24 hours a day. Yeah. Um, we ship on average to five countries a day. We've shipped to 75 countries this year alone. Um, so we're selling airplane parts around the world literally all day and night, all year round. So. Jeez, like we've just been walking and talking and it's just parts and parts and parts and parts. It's like Home Depot for airplane parts. <laughs> it's incredible. It is. It's what's, to me, what's really interesting about this warehouse is how well organized it is. Like you look this way and you see doors. And then yeah. you see baggage doors, and then you see seats, and you see cowlings, and you see surfaces, and... Oh, jeez. <laughs> Just nothing but surfaces. I see wings down there. Yeah. <laughs> Walk, uh, go, th go down go that, that way? We'll, oh, we'll looks treacherous. A circle. <laughs> I like how these lights, uh, LEDs, I'm assuming, that just turn on as needed. You know, something that we just, we don't, we don't publicize it. It's not a point of conversation for us, but a lot of things that happen in this warehouse are very, um, you know, sort of. Oh, uh, room, room for more. Yeah, we just expanded. So we just added this pallet racking and haven't quite filled it up yet. Uh, but and we moved wings to the back. Ah, yeah, we'll figure it out. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if I said it yet. My son's uh, with us. He just had foot surgery, so he's he's kind of a gimp, but uh, we can make it through here. There we go. Wow. Look at all this. This is wings. Uh, wings and propellers. Um, oh, look at this one. I like this one. We buy airplanes, and we typically won't buy an airplane without logbooks. We want to, we want the traceability of the parts. Got um, it. But pretty commonly, we buy inventories. We might buy an inventory from a repair station with a lot of stuff on a shelf, and we don't always get all the traceability. But things like this, like this propeller with with no logs, it'll it'll be art. You know, it'll end up on somebody's wall. <laughs> so we keep some wings here. We also have the yard. We'll go over to the yard and look in a minute. We do have a that's an M600 wing. Oh, wow. Hyper M600 wing. That's an expensive one, so we have it very carefully suspended. Very delicately taken care of. But someday someone's going to call you for that, and you're going right. to be like, well, we get to keep an airplane flying. You can get one from Piper, it'll take three years, or you can get one from us, it'll take us an hour to get it down from the city. Gosh, and that's definitely a large freight item. But yeah. it, this is just cool stuff, and I can see just looking at this, you guys do keep quality parts. Oh, yeah. I, I've seen some messed up stuff. Oh, yeah. Like, even messed up flying stuff, and this right. stuff is definitely next level. Yeah. So, yeah. very, it's, very cool. It's very detailed, and we spend a lot of time and energy um, making sure stuff's clean, making sure that we can guarantee it. We can't offer a 90 day guarantee if we're not confident that you can use it and you know, pass inspection and. And, true, true, know, true. Go back on your airplane effectively. So, um. <laughs> look at all these tails. There we go. I actually have a Mooney M20 tail on my set. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it was probably sitting in that rack at some point. Oh, no, I got that from uh, the salvage yard in Arizona. It oh, I see, I see. And the airplane actually crashed in Sedona, Arizona. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, kind of funny. So, it all just kind of stayed local. But yeah. that doesn't usually happen. Right. I've heard you guys will go. Border to border. There's yeah. the air tractor engine. Oh, Massive. air tractor engine, radial. Yes, huge. and several engines. Some of these I've seen posted on Facebook already. And if you guys um, don't follow them on social media, Facebook, they post a lot of cool stuff there. Other things to be able to, and not necessarily pique your interest, but parts and stuff that you, are, you can legitimately use if you're looking so definitely follow them and they show some cool projects there too so it's just just kind of fun sorry i'm all over the place <laughs> i've seen the process from airplane to cleaning to research so what you'll see along the aisles here are airplanes that we either just finished and they're waiting to go into research or they're waiting to be put away in the warehouse it's just it's a never-ending process like we yeah. never get there's there's no finish line we just we we run an airplane through this this uh, this process and then we go to the next airplane and we go to the next airplane so oh and um transportation in here that's cool yeah, uh, yeah. All cars <laughs> with, with the smooth. baskets and everything yeah. on them i mean that's yeah. that's smart it's yeah. a big place. oh look and he's yeah. <laughs> 
But I mean, that goes hand in hand with your whole system. Your inventory system is like he knows exactly where he's going, right. exactly what he's going to be picking up, and right. so it's it and makes it easy. There's Isaiah. Say hi, Isaiah. <laughs> Put so parts away. Isaiah is our logistics lead, so Isaiah is pulling parts from orders. So he gets all the orders, he sees the order, knows exactly where to go in the warehouse to find the part, and what he's doing right now is pulling parts that are going in a box to go to somebody somewhere around the world. That's awesome. Absolutely incredible. Okay, I bet. Oh gosh, I just saw like all across all the, there, the all the engine, engine mounts. mounts. Yeah, they, go, they go from wall Jeez. to wall. Yep. <laughs> This is just so cool. You stand in this warehouse, and every time I come out here, I'm like, oh, I've never noticed that before. Like, no, like um, nose cones up there. Oh. <laughs> four blade props on the top of a rack back there. And like all these boxes up high are, are complete interior sets. Oh, jeez. Uh, so it just, it kind of never ends. So cool. And there's just things everywhere. Awesome. Uh, well, I, I, I guess we're done with this miles and miles of shelves, but yep. you say that there's there's other things? So, yeah, we have um, here in Greeley, we have about a five acre yard. Um, that's where fuselages and a lot of larger wings and larger control surfaces go. Um, so, I think Matt's going to run you over there and kind of show you around. That's that's kind of the boneyard of the boneyard of the place. Yeah. I'm excited to see that, but it is bitterly cold for this Arizona boy now. So, um, so hey, Ty, are you going to come with us? Do you have a choice? Yes. <laughs> he doesn't want to go. I, I don't blame him, but I'm excited to see it. So, uh, yeah, let, let's go. Yeah. I'm just kind of driving through here, and <laughs> there's there's a cub. <laughs> oh, it's a clip wing. Wow. Okay, so we are just on the other side of the airport road here, and we're going into <laughs> the yard, right? That's what you guys call it? Yes. And this is yeah. Bryce. Bryce has joined us in this adventure because Clint had to go to a meeting. So uh, I don't know if it wants to let us in, but I'm, I'm already seeing, oh my gosh, how many wings? <laughs> it's just gonna get crazier. It will. So the yard was really cool, and they had fuselages of all kinds laying all over the place, and my head was on a swivel just trying to take it all in, and we even found more air tractor parts. Guys, it is cold and freezing out here, but it's so cool to be able to see all of this, and I, I believe this is a Cirrus? It is! Oh my goodness. And that's when I accidentally maxed out my mic. But I was saying that they put these tires in there to keep the airframes weighted down so they don't blow away in the wind. But I was completely in awe about how cool the Cirrus was on the inside. It's a completely different plane with nothing in it. And then I made a corny joke about how it's the only kind of Cirrus that I could afford. But in all seriousness, this place is so cool and I just wanted to spend hours walking around poking my head and things. But it was just so cold I couldn't bring myself to do it. I did find the largest fuselage on site though, and I have no idea what it is, it was just too cool to pass up. So after making a verbal agreement that if I injure myself or die that it's going to be my own fault, I climbed in to take a look, and the audio kind of worked in here without the wind. But uh, wow, oh, this is just so cool, like you never get to see this type of stuff, the, how things work on the inside all the wires and bulkheads and how everything works a trash can of concrete to keep it from rolling around and that didn't last long but wow there's so much going on in here are, are those fuel lines i gotta figure out what those are all about anyways like i said there's just so much going on in here with wire structure and design guys i absolutely love this stuff oh hi ty hi. <laughs> so cool all right, guys, and I'm back in the lobby. This was absolutely incredible. Um, a kid in a candy store, like literally for me. So I wanted to say thank you guys for letting me come and explore here. And uh, guys, definitely check them out online. Follow them on social media, like I was saying before, because they post a lot of really cool stuff. Even if you're not looking to buy it, it's really cool to see all these airplane parts. But uh, again, huge thank you guys. And as always, share aviation wherever you can, and we'll see you in the next one.